Hey everybody, welcome back to Angina's Creation. In this video, I'm going to show you how to assemble the new template hexagon purse box. Now in this template, I'm going to give you multiple options and this template is compatible with Cricut Design Space and Silhouette Studio. All you have to do is head on over to my website, anginascreations.com. So let's get started. You're going to receive six different files, three SVGs and three Silhouette Studio files. I'm going to go ahead and start off with the AK Hexagon Purse. This is the solid purse. You do not have to add handles. You can add handles to all three or no handles. I'm going to go ahead and start cutting out the pink base. That's the main base. And go ahead and start folding your score marks. After you are done folding over your score marks, your next step is to go ahead and grab those teal pieces from the template. Those pieces, you're going to cut it out on metallic or glitter cardstock. Number one thing here is about the hexagon. You keep rotating the pieces to make sure it aligns correctly and it's all facing the correct way. After you are done gluing this, you are going to go ahead and over to the next step. For this box, I am not going to glue the handle, but before you glue this uh, little rectangle of your metallic piece, go ahead and put your handle first so everything could be a seamless look. That's totally up to you if you don't want to add it here in this part, but I recommend gluing the handles before you glue all the layers on the smaller parts. Now we're going to go ahead and grab the lavender pieces from your template and glue these pieces on top of your metallic or glitter cardstock. Again, make sure that you're rotating these pieces to make sure that everything is aligned correctly. As you can see here, this one actually is not aligned correctly. So I actually took it off and rotated it and glue it the correct way. Make sure that your hexagons are all pointing the same way. After you are done gluing all your layers, go ahead and glue your tabs. I will be using hot glue for this part for a faster process. Number one thing is to make sure that all your score marks are aligning correctly and everything is flush. As you can see here, make sure that you keep pulling up or down to make sure that everything is aligning correctly. Now your first box is completely done. You can go ahead and decorate it even more, adding 3D images in the front or a font, whatever you would like. Here I'm showing you how the 3D images work. You will just do a print and cut of any image of your choice and you're going to create offsets off of that image, either Cricut or Silhouette Studio just an offset and then you're going to do uh put 3d foam tape behind each um offset you're going to layer it on top of each other and then you're going to layer that on top of your box or anything that you're designing that's it that's how easy it is to create 3d images All right, so let's head on over to option number two, the hexagon shaker purse. We're going to start with the first pink base. That is the main base. And we're going to go ahead and cut out all those pink pieces first. Once you do that, you're going to go ahead and score over your or fold over your score marks for the pink base. Go ahead and cut out your metallic or glitter pieces. That is going to be the solid teal pieces. And you're going to go ahead and glue it on top of one side only of this purse. Now, remember I said if you will be adding handles to the purse, glue your handles before you add this gold piece right here. I actually forgot because while I was recording this video, I was on TikTok live and I was talking too much and I literally forgot that step, but that's just a personal preference on my end. All right. Now, remember when you are gluing your hexagons, make sure that you are rotating that they are aligning correctly. This one right here is the lavender solid piece, the second layer that you will be gluing on top. 
the three long strips on your template those are your straps you can decide if you only want the main base you don't have to add the layers you can add only the first layer or you can add both layers and just glue them on top of each other again these are optionals no handle one layer two layers after you glue all your layers together go ahead and put that on the side because you don't glue it until you close the box I am using a bone folder. I'll leave the links down below of all the items that I'm using and also the links for the images that I'm using. But I use a bone folder to give it that curved texture or that curvature on the handle. I'm showing you here that the next pieces should be the lavender pieces, which is the second layer, which you're going to do a print and cut or you can use paper pads from Joann's or Michael's Hobby Lobby and so on. Now, here's the mistake that I did. I am gluing these pieces and remember I said do not glue these pieces until you glue the handle. I'm like come on Angina, you're messing up on this video but you will see later on that you're not going to see that piece. Go ahead and cut out the white hexagon piece that's going to be the print and cut or any decorative cardstock you want to add in here. This is what you're going to see inside of your shaker. Again, make sure that those hexagon pieces are aligning correctly. After you glue this piece there, you're gonna get you're gonna go ahead and grab the hollow strip pieces from the pink layers. You're gonna cut out as many pieces as you want. This is going to give a height for your shaker pieces to move. I'm only gonna cut four. And again, when you glue these strips, make sure they are aligning and then you're gonna glue those on top of your purse. All right. Once you do that, you're gonna go ahead and cut out the um, gray piece. That gray piece is your acetate sheet. And before you glue your acetate sheet, go ahead and put your shaker pieces. Depending how much height you gave it, that's how you're gonna know what can you add in there. I only did four strips, so I could only add thin glitter in here. And I am going to be using 3-in-1 Beacons glue for my acetate sheet. That cute little spoon, I got it from TJ's Magic Touch. You're going to go ahead and cut another hollow strip to cover the top. You can cut it out of glitter, metallic paper, or any decorative or a print and cut, whatever you want. But you just need another piece of that strip to cover everything you just did. Then go ahead and glue your tabs. I will be using hot glue to make the process faster. After you do that, you're going to go ahead and glue your purse strap and then the rest of the layers on top of the purse strap. I'm doing the same thing here. I'm putting an image in the front of 3D image. I got, I'm gonna leave the links down below of where I got the images from. Again, I just did an offset. You can do this in Cricut Design Space or Silhouette Studio. I don't know any other programs because these are the only two programs that I use. So again, I grabbed my image, it's a PNG image, and I did an offset. And I did measure my image with the template to make sure how big I wanted the images to be. I, I used I did use 3D foam tape to give it a 3D effect and I'm just gonna add it in front of the purse. You can do this as big as small. You don't have to add anything at all. It's totally up to you. This is all optional things that you can do with these templates. So let's go ahead and cut out your next file. The last one is the hexagon honeycomb shaker purse. You're gonna go ahead and start with your pink base. That is the main base. Fold over your score marks. Don't forget to cut out the strap if you do wanna add the strap. Remember, the straps is optional if you wanna have it like a purse, but you can just leave it as a box. After you go ahead and fold over your score marks, you're gonna go ahead and cut out the main uh, teal piece, the solid one. That piece is going to go ahead and uh, get glued on the back of the purse. Go ahead and cut out your lavender pieces. That is your second layer of your decorative cardstock. Remember, these are all optionals and go ahead and glue it on top of that piece. 
you're going to go ahead and cut out that white hexagon piece that is going to be your printing cut or any decorative cardstock of your choice remember that to always match your hexagon pieces after you do this part you're going to go ahead and cut out as many strips of you want of the pink base or the pink layers i am going to do four for this one as well depending how many strips you cut that's how much height you're giving the shakers to move always remember that then add your glitter or any of your shaker pieces remember if you want to use this cute spoon i'm gonna leave the link down below as well for this spoon then you're gonna go ahead and glue your acetate sheet i am using the three in one beacons glue and then you're gonna go ahead and glue the honeycomb layer on top of your acetate sheet On this template, I added a honey drip. If you do want to use that part, go ahead and cut it out of any color cardstock you want. I did use gold metallic cardstock. And you're going to go ahead and glue that in the back of your box. You can also do it in the front, but I'm doing it in the back to give it that extra touch. Then you're going to go ahead and glue your tabs together. After you glue your tabs, you add your handle. For this handle, I only added two pieces. But if you want that extra layer, you can go ahead and grab it from one of the other files you have. And then um, after you glue your handle, you're going to go ahead and glue those layers that go on the side. So with this box here, you kind of notice what I was talking about with the first two files that I like to add the handle before I add these two layers. I just like that look better because it gives it to me a more seamless look. But if you did forget like me at the beginning and you glued one layer already, it's perfectly fine. Just do what best works for you. For this box i'm doing the same thing i did cut out a teddy bear image and then i did create offsets and i also created an a 3d name the same thing with this you would just type any word you want and after you type the word you would just create offsets around the word and that's how you do a 3d image as well with the fonts All right, y'all, we are done. Comment down below which one is your favorite one. I gave y'all so many options with this template. If you're new here, please don't forget to subscribe and click on notification bell to get notified every time I upload new videos. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to comment. Don't forget to share. And I'll talk to you guys later. I have so much coming for you guys, so stay tuned. And I hope everyone's having a blessed day. Bye-bye, y'all.